do a RE3 wor workflow walkthrough of how to get an image saved from Google or the internet anywhere into the software and do the power settings before we actually laser. Yep. So let's jump into the software and do so. Here we are. So I'm gonna, it's like I've done I'm gonna this crouch before. down. I am last week, I don't know. So we're going to go to Google. We got it. We got it. <laughs> All right. We'll figure it out. Okay. Oh, what? What? Eric Cook says, hi, Tim's beard. <laughs> <laughs> it says hi back. You can't hear it, but it says hi. It's a creepy whisper. <laughs> <laughs> the mic doesn't really pick it up very well. Super creepy. Um, anyway, so we have Google up. And usually, if I want to find an image, I will Google images. So let's say... High contrast photo. Usually I do high contrast photos and then I'll go to the image. Images, obviously. And let me just maximize this here. Yeah, images. There we go. And I will also go to tools on Google, size large that's going to give you a very um you know high resolution image and you're going to have a good output on your laser and obviously we could you know high contrast what what tim beard photos yeah beard photos and there we go you're into that okay well there's some creepy ones Anyways, we'll find that's a pretty good image, black and white. You can he also. Doesn't he doesn't have a beard. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have a beard. Also, go color black and white and find. Uh, look, this is a great picture of me before my tattoo removal and beard removal. And beard removal. <laughs> so, save that image, and I always save to the desktop. So, we'll save to the desktop. Um, uh, we'll just save it as Beard Guy 92. <laughs> and, uh, that How did you know my... Uh, your password? <laughs> no, my, my AOL uh, screen name. Oh, my, man. My instant messenger your screen name. Your AIM? <laughs> Hit me up on AIM. So, uh, usually I'll download it. I will... Show in folder. I'll, let's just close Google. And then I will just drag and drop that image in. Beard Guy 92. Now you can also place an import from the file drop down as well, but this is just a kind of a quicker way if you know where it's at. There we go. Beard Guy 92 is in there. You can see on the left hand side it only has bitmap data that means it's only going to do an engraving so there's no vector data on that file so you will not be able to actually cut this guy out unless in the software you grab the rectangle to tool and you go boom now you have beard guy 92 as a raster and your rectangle to cut him out Renee says that you named it Beard Guy 92 because you have 91 other pictures of bearded men on your computer. Caught. <laughs> <laughs> she got you, bro. Caught. Oh, man. All righty. That, that's a joke my dad would make. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in cahoots. So, I'm going to give it a little border, you know, because Beard Guy just deserves it. Uh, move it over with the arrow keys and you'll see that we have the vector selected so the power is going to be the, on the right hand side right up here right up here um, and power we'll do a hundred we can change that current not a lot of people mess with current right but it's pretty important I like to adjust current before I do power Same. it's actually better for your tube as well so Take note of that. Laser tip. Always laser the always laser. Always lower the current before lowering the power. Think of the current almost as like the second hand. 
whereas the power is the minute hand. Yeah, you, you'd rather dial those in than yeah. lose hours. So, speed 100, and again, we will go to the raster properties. I want it to raster first, so, whoop, I won't delete it. Thanks, Tim. So, I do have a quick question here from Kurt. Uh, oh, okay. He's asking, is it better to pull the black and white images over color images, and how does the software react between the two? So the software dithers no matter what. Some images, depending on which images, can have a better output if they're already black and white. But the, Im uh, the actual uh, software does a really good job in itself. But ideally, you would take it into Photoshop or GIMP or something similar that's free, convert it to black and white. Up the contrast. Up the contrast. And you'll learn that as you laser more and more photos. I'm not a huge fan of rastering. I think it's really cool. You know, it's great for like mom and you show her a picture of, you know, you as a baby engraved on a, you know, piece of tile. But like, I like cutting stuff, making stuff. Um, but I understand some people do love engraving. Some people, that's all they do. I like engraving. Uh, good for you. Um, <laughs> we have both sides of the coin here. So, if we throw it as a threshold in the software, you'll see that it is just black and white. If we change the black and white threshold, you'll watch the image change and pick up the different shades and convert it into just the black and white image. So you can get cool effects this way, but if you're doing a photo, just do the halftone dither because it does look cool. It does look cool, and it's going to give you way more detail. Yeah, way more detail, and that's the photorealism right there. Um, and just remember that it's a web-based uh, browser-based software hosted on the machine. And the machine, especially if you have tons of projects, has limited resources. So, because some people have like a hundred projects open. Which we were getting, nuts. we were getting there. I had to delete a few the other day. Really? Yeah. Well, not a hundred, but I get stressed out when there's when there's a scroll wheel. A scroll wheel? Well, like the yeah, you see, there, there's enough where you have to scroll through the projects. Like that stresses me out. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I I <laughs> usually. I usually don't let it get too bad. Uh, I usually like like four, I think, is like the most I usually have open. Yeah, and if then, I can help it. then then anxiety sets in yeah. for some OCD reason. Well, especially because like pretty much all of marketing shares it, and you know, with this side of the building, so everyone's uploading their projects, and no one ever names anything. A. So that's <laughs> always super yeah, hard yeah. too. It's project one through twenty. <laughs> it I doesn't even it doesn't even say it's just new project, new project. Oh new yeah. Project. <laughs> um. So, as you zoom out, you can see that the resolution is a little changed, and that is just a visual in the software. That's not the actual output. It's always going to be way better IRL. Right. What's that mean, Tim? In real life. For you know people who don't know. So, if anybody has any questions about getting photos or vectors or anything into the software, it's as simple as drag and drop. But there are some occasions where, you know, maybe you're doing something, you want to print from Illustrator straight to the software. If you have any issues, just let us know. Um, Kurt also has another question. He says, is current and power settings an RE3 only setting? He hasn't seen it on his version of Retina and Grape with uh, Gen 5 Hobby. Gen 5 Hobby does have current and power. It's just in the same area. Um, it's laid out a little bit differently but the old software does have current on the right hand side right before passes I believe so I hope I hope that answered your question all right all right I think that we're done yeah so um, I forgot to throw this up again oh my goodness just in case look at that so just in case any new people are watching and have no idea who we are like that annoying guy and the bearded guy okay good <laughs>